Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. Today's review will be featuring the brand new MSI GE Raider. The Raider usually is available as both a 15 inch and a 17 inch option and today we'll be covering the 17 inch version. So let's go ahead and get started. As part of our full review process we'll start with unboxing the product so you can see exactly how it will be packaged and what to expect inside if you were to order one of your own. We do have the standard double boxing here, the plain cardboard box on the outside for protection and to also keep it a little bit less flashy while it's being shipped. In this particular case, the inside box also isn't super flashy, it's pretty basic, just black with the MSI logo. As we open it up, we see that we have our laptop right here on top and it's protected with a nice sleeve so it doesn't get scratched. And there is the GE73 Raider. Now as we dig a little bit deeper, we'll get down to the next level. And on the left hand side, we're going to find the power adapter cable. So this will be different depending on your region. It'll adapt your local power and make it work with the AC-DC power adapter. Little quick start guide here. And lastly, at the very bottom, we're going to find the actual power adapter itself. and one up close view so you can see the power adapter specs. Let's go ahead and get some of our standard measurements and here is the weight of the laptop by itself at six pounds and eight ounces. Once you throw in the charger as well, the total carry weight will be 8 pounds and 15 ounces, which is just under 9 pounds. The next measurement is going to be our physical size. So with coins for scale and a ruler for the actual measurements, you can see the rear of the laptop is over an inch, not quite an inch and a half, while the front is really close to one inch. So we do have the higher side in the rear, making this a wedge shaped laptop. Now we have the system fully powered on and ready to go. First glance, you can see it's very attractive looking with the red and black color scheme and the RGB keyboard. Of course that keyboard, as with all the newer MSIs, is brought to you by SteelSeries. Here's the rest of the specs according to our sticker badge. So let's continue on with the tour of the unit in this particular position. We'll see that we have a very large touchpad to the center left with the individual left and right click buttons, which is a little bit easier to use than the single pieces where it's integrated into one bar. That low profile chiclet style keyboard with the LED backlighting that's fully customizable through the software. We have an HD webcam at the top above the monitor and the integrated microphone as well. Now we'll go ahead and start taking a tour of the outside perimeter and looking at our connectivity options. Starting with the left hand side, in the very back we have our Kensington lock port so we can lock down the laptop. Then we have the RJ45 port for local networking, HDMI output, mini display port output, a USB 3.0 port, a USB 3.1 Type-C port and two 3.5 millimeter connections for headphones and microphone. To the rear of the laptop, you will not find any connectivity here, just the two large left and right exhaust vents for all the hot air to come out of the system. You do see the LED backlighting inside of the actual LCD lid as well, so extra flare for this laptop. Moving along to the right side, so we'll start in the back. It's going to be our AC-DC port here so we can charge and run off of mains power. Two more USB 3.0 ports and a card reader. With the lid closed, we'll go ahead and spin it around one last time for you to see what the laptop looks like all around. 
before we dive into the software and operating system. So we'll start off inside of the keyboard customization here. We have several presets for different patterns of colors that you can set, or you can go in and individually set up each key for the way you would like. And of course, in addition to the keys on the keyboard, we do have customization separate from that for the lighting on the back of the lid. So here is a short demo of some of that lighting we have available on the back lid options. All right, now moving into the MSI Dragon Center. This is, of course, that central piece of software that lets you get a lot of the different information from your system and quickly set a lot of the different options as well. Some of the built-in features are things you can do with Windows on its own, but others are specific to the software, such as setting advanced CPU and GPU cooling speeds. So now moving along into the device manager, we can look at the hardware inside. Some of the really cool things to look at here is going to be the 8th generation i7 8750H. That's a 6 core CPU, 12 cores altogether with hyper threading. The screen is a standard 1920 by 1080p, but where it really stands out is the fact that it has a 120 hertz refresh rate, which is really great for gaming. So overall, where this hardware setup will put you with the GE Raider is somebody who either cares about gaming or uses a dedicated GPU for some kind of 3D accelerated task, who wants the larger 17-inch screen for extra screen size, and doesn't mind carrying a slightly larger laptop around. So we'll start evaluating the performance of all this hardware here shortly. We're getting our baseline temperatures right now so that we can see how the cooling system works. And here is the actual external baseline temperatures as well with our FLIR infrared thermometer camera. And for our last baseline metric, it's going to be the noise levels from the cooling system. So we have our noise meter right next to the exhaust for our worst case scenario readings. And of course, we'll measure these again when we have the benchmarks running. So we have 3D Mark Firestrike running right now. And while that's running, we'll go ahead and take a look at some of those other baselines. 
Here's how the temperatures are doing on the outside of the laptop. You can see we've definitely got some heat building up near the back of the laptop where all of the exhaust and cooling parts are. The main thing to look for here is that we do not want any heat where the hands would be touching because that would give you an uncomfortable experience and you do want to see a lot of heat near the back of the system because that means it is getting rid of that heat like it's supposed to. Next is the retake of the sound levels. You can see those have definitely gone up. We're short of 60 decibels here on the back. And surprisingly, there's actually quite a bit of difference to the other side. It's a lot quieter here, which means either the CPU or the GPU side is working that fan much harder. So 3D Mark Firestrike has finished with a score of 15,495. That's a really great score and a good indicator of how this will do in your gaming. As far as our maximum temperatures during the benchmark go, according to our logs, we have almost 90 degrees Celsius on the CPU, and the GPU was only at 72 degrees Celsius. So the CPU got a little bit warm, but it is a six core CPU in a laptop, and the GPU stayed actually really nice and cool. Now time to show off some of that CPU power. We're running Cinebench R15 here. And this is a mostly CPU driven benchmark. So we'll let that run through and see how our scores go. Those performance scores in and a 1102 Cinebench score for this particular setup. Next up will be the volume of the speakers. Moving along with our review process, we're now moving into the final segment of the review, which is going to be the disassembly of the system. We have tons of small screws to remove from the bottom of the laptop, and that's going to let us take off the bottom plate. Taking a closer look at all the internals, first thing is you see four speakers in the front. A 17-inch laptop often has room for these extra speakers. Usually one will be a sub speaker for deeper bass, and then the second speaker will be responsible for your mids and highs. Up above that, we're gonna see that we have a M2 form factor SSD. That's where your operating system will live. And up above that, we have some of our system RAM slots. Just to the right, we have an open bay here for a PCI Express interface SSD. The above part has the very large and intricate array of heat pipes for cooling one of our wireless cards in the center, and just to the left is a two and a half inch mechanical hard drive. This is your larger storage for your non-OS to keep all of your media and other data. Now for the next level of teardown, we have to take out several more small screws, and that's gonna allow us to take the cooling system off of the motherboard. As you can see, two main spots where we have thermal paste, the rest of it was thermal pads, and that's covering our GPU and our CPU. So those who know, know that the disassembly means the end of our product review video today. We hope everybody was able to enjoy the video, found it 
entertaining and educational, hopefully answered any questions you might have had about this model. Of course, you can click on the product link in the description of the video. There it'll take you to our page where we have the current pricing and availability and the full system specs. If you have any extra questions you want to ask, feel free to ask those down below in the comments section. We'll answer those for you and everybody else. And don't be shy. If you need extra help, call us by phone or email us and we can give you one-on-one -on -one help as well. So once again, we just want to remind you, this was GenTech PC, and we'll see you next time.